Now, my father, please be so kind as to give us preaching power. And Father, we'll give you thanks in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Sister Lorraine, just a little bit of volume, please. Thank you so very much. Reverend Blanche, <clears throat> Reverend Johnson, Pastor Chisholm, and to all of the other ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Brother Kenny, thank you, choir, for rendering the music this morning. To this precious family. Every I think every pastor has certain families mm -hmm. that seem to gain a sense of closeness yes. with them by virtue of experiences. And at the beginning of my tenure here, the Gibson family has certainly become one of those families. Yes. It's gained a sense of closeness to my heart. For Brother Wayne was the first funeral that I conducted here as the pastor of this church. And I have had opportunity to walk with this family through a variety of experiences. And then, <clears throat> about a year and a half ago, Brother Chuck walked down the aisle. And he united with this branch of Zion. And we had a new member's orientation. I don't know whether it was an orientation or a comedy fest. <laughs> because he told more jokes and I just kept laughing. And the more I, the more I laughed, the more he told the jokes. Uh, it was, we were usually, those sessions aren't too long. It depends on, but I think we were there for almost three hours. Oh, uh, you know, we had to kind of shut it down. But he had such a vibrant personality, uh, a, such a jovial attitude, even when it came down to, I remember he said to me he was going into surgery, you know, and he made a joke about that, and I was like, well, what's so funny about that? But, you know, but he was able, because of his personality, was able to make the best out of any situation. The second Sunday of January, the Spirit prompted me after our communion service because I had some unfinished business with Brother Chuck. Because yeah. mm -hmm. even though he had uh, taken the new member's orientation, <clears throat> he never had the opportunity to get the right hand to fellowship. Yeah. And so I, along with one of the members of the church, went over to go see him. Now mind you, the doctors had said that he had such and such a time to live, I believe, yes. and he exceeded that time. Amen. And so I, the Spirit prompted me, and my pastor always taught me that when the Spirit is prompting you to do something, you do it. Amen. I went there, gave him the right hand of fellowship, administered the Lord's Supper to him, gave him communion, and then prayed the prayer of blessing over his life. And within a couple days, he had made his transition. 
I made mention of that because there is an identical story in the Gospel of Luke chapter number two that vividly reminds me of this experience. And I just want to tag, uh, look at Luke chapter number two. If you have your Bibles, I won't be long. But if you prove it me, I'll be strong. All right. Verse 25 of chapter 2. Uh -huh. Luke's gospel. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Well. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost all right, all right. rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arm and praised God saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. God bless you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And in our conversation with the family last week, as we were in preparation for this service, the Spirit again prompted me through the conversation to just preach from this thought, taking care of unfinished business. Taking care of unfinished business. Sansa Ray, our life is filled with a variety of experiences, both good and bad. Uh -huh. Am I in the right church? Yeah. Let me say that once again. All of us will have both good and bad experiences. Sometimes these negative episodes in our life will blur our vision, our vision so that we do not see the better days ahead of us. And so, brothers and sisters, God will, in many instances, allow a certain event, a certain person, to come into our life to remind us that there are better days ahead of us. Once that event, once that person, once that timing in our life has transpired, then you and I can be dismissed in peace. Because the design of that moment, that design of that experience is to remind us that trouble don't last always. Can I get a witness in here? And I think right now that somebody has been summoned in this sanctuary today at this very moment, at this very moment when divine speaks to humanity and God wants to remind each of you that trouble don't last always. Can the church shout hallelujah? Let me see if I can get a witness on my right side. Weeping may endure for just a night. This ain't my side. Come on, family. Weeping may endure for just tonight. Can I get some witnesses in here? But is there anybody in here that can testify that joy? Come on, somebody. Comes in the morning. God will show up and show out. God will make ways out. Can I get a witness in here? Let me see if I can get a David for you. David say, yea, though I walk. 
Come on, somebody. Through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. The good news is, brothers and sisters, somebody in here has been summoned to the People's Baptist Church, 5039 Baltimore Avenue, Philadelphia, PA 19143 in the heart of Southwest Philadelphia. You've been summoned here to realize and to be made aware that God will show up where in your dilemma God will make ways. Come on somebody, out of no way. Come on, clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. This is indeed what I find in this text. As Brother Harold, as Luke gives his analysis, if you will, on the birth of Jesus. In every instance of the story, we see how God takes an ordinary experience and fills it with spiritual significance. And that's the kind of God that we serve. We serve a God that will take the ordinary things of life, the things that we take for granted and fill it with moments of spiritual significance. He will take those moments and God will work through them. Am I in the right chair? For the Bible says, and let me call Paul for witness, Paul said, and we know that all things work together for the good. Can I get a witness in here? For them who love God and are the call according to his purpose. The good news is, is that for those who love Jesus, God, there is nothing in our life that is a coincidence, but everything is the by divine intentionality. Can the church shout hallelujah? God takes, God is at work, Luke will show us. That God is at work through the ordinary experiences of life. He takes ordinary moments. He takes ordinary people. And he uses those moments and those ordinary people to bring about spiritual significance. And so it is that in that line of thought that we enter that Mary and Joseph go to the temple <clears throat> to do, for Mary to do what is according to the law. For in the Old Testament, when a woman had a child, after the birth of that child, they had to wait a certain amount of days. They were considered unclean for a certain amount of days which means nobody could touch her. Men couldn't, you know, do what men, you, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna keep it G-rated. But then at the end of that moment, they would go to the temple and they would offer a, a lamb for a burnt offering or an a pigeon for a sin offering and if they didn't have any money they offered either two turtle doves or two pigeons and so of course Mary and Joseph were on the budget <clears throat> and so they did they offered two turtle doves and as they entered the temple to give their sacrifice to the priest who would make atonement for them yeah. Along comes a man that we've never read about before in scripture. His name is Simeon. He is described, Reverend Chisholm, as a, a, a devout man. A man who was filled with the Holy Ghost. That does not suggest that the man was perfect. Because, can I get some witnesses in here? All of us got issues. Y'all gonna sit there and be quiet on me, but y'all know I'm telling the truth. You got issues, I got issues. All God's children got issues. Can I get a witness in here? And all it, does, all it takes is the right circumstance. All it takes is the right person to press your button. But brothers and sisters, I'm so glad that God does not look 
look at us for our issues, but God loves us because he saved us and called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. But then the Bible says, the storyline goes that, Lord have mercy, the storyline goes that it was revealed to him. Y'all excuse me for a second, it's getting kind of hot up in here. But it was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he would not see death until he saw the Lord's Messiah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this man is of age. The Bible does not say when he received this promise. It might have been a long time, but he received the promise that he would see the Lord's Messiah. And during that time, there was a lot of stuff going on in Israel. There was a lot of problems and the promise that he would see Jesus before his death was a reminder that things would get better. He walks into the temple and he sees the little baby, takes the baby in his arms and begins to praise God and say, Lord, you can dismiss your servant in peace. In other words, I'm able to die in peace now because I've seen the salvation of Israel, the light to the Gentiles. He goes to the woman. I'm almost through here. Church, pray for me. He goes to the mother and says that your son has been set for the rising of some and the falling of others. And there are going to be people who will oppose him and a sword will pierce your heart. But I don't want to place my focus on the promise. I want to place my sermon spotlight on Simeon. Because the life of Simeon and the life of Chuck clearly reflect this idea that there God won't let you leave this world until you have a certain experience in your life. Can the church shout hallelujah? I don't care. Now, someone say, preacher, what gives you the uh, audacity, the Holy Ghost audacity to tell Say that God won't let you die until you have a certain experience. How can you and how do you know that? Can I give y'all two reasons why and I'm out of here? First of all, here's how I know that God won't let you leave here until you have fulfilled everything that he has assigned for your life. First of all, because God is ultimately, thank you Jesus, in control of the destiny of humanity. Does that, does that make sense? God is in control. We use a big word in theology school called God is sovereign. That means God can do whatever he wants to do, how he wants to do it, and to whom he wants to do it to. And so, as I said earlier, Simeon was not told. Oh, we're not told, rather, when Simeon received the promise. He might have received it in his youth. He might have received it in his middle ages. But God said, whenever I make a promise, I'm going to keep my word. Now, let me say this. The promises of God do not negate the experiences of humanity. You see, when God makes a promise, there will be things that will challenge the promise. Let me see if I can make that make sense. 
For Brother Chuck, there were moments when you all thought he was on his way out of here. There were moments when he was traumatically sick and and you all were preparing, but, but, but there was some fight in him. There was some tenacity in him. There was perseverance and there was an awareness that there's some, that God has some unfinished business with me. Can the church shout hallelujah? What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that God, it doesn't matter what has happened in your life. It doesn't matter what will happen in your life. But Chuck's life serves as an example that when God has something special for you, you ain't getting up out of here that easy. For Simeon, he, need to, he needed to see the Lord's Christ. Yes, yes. For Brother Chuck, he needed to receive that right hand of fellowship and communion and that final prayer. And watch this. Thank you, Jesus. Once he had received that final blessing, God, I can envisage in my mind, he said, it is now finished. Can I get a witness in here? Hallelujah. There was mention, a mention, as Debbie Gibson mentioned, I believe on the prayer line this morning, that after that Sunday that he received their prayer, that right hand of fellowship, there was a calmness about him. There was a sense of satisfaction about him. When you are made aware that God, that, 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 uh, uh, when God has done what he has promised in your life, you can be easy. You can be calm. In fact, you ain't got to leave here kicking and screaming. One more thing and I'm on my way out of here. Can the church shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But just give me two more Baptist minutes and I'm through here. (laughs) But there, not only... Does God have complete control over our destiny? But finally, God hears I know that God won't allow you to leave here until you have that experience. Because God will give you a sense of openness. Can I get a witness in here? He'll give you a sense of openness an expectation about that moment. Simeon's life, he was guided by the Spirit. Guided by the Spirit. And may I suggest that Chuck's life was guided by the Spirit. That God guided him to the moment when he got when he first joined this church. God guided him to the moment when he got uh, his new member's orientation. But ultimately, God guided him to the moment when he would get the right hand of fellowship and receive full-fledged privileges to be a part of the People's Baptist Church. What am I trying to say to you, church? Each of you in this church, there is something, there is an event, there is a person, there is something in your life that you got to do before you leave a body here. For somebody, it might be to get your life right. For somebody, it might mean that you need to make amends with somebody. For 
somebody, it might mean that you need to stop being so serious and uptight. Can I get a witness in here? For some people, it might just mean that you begin to live life to the fullest. For some of you, it might mean to go get some insurance so that we don't have to worry about when you leave here. For some of us, it might mean to go back to school. Listen, your life is like a stage play. You have a certain amount of time to get up and act out your part. And once you act out your part, you are dismissed. And somebody here today, good God from Zion, needs to be reminded that there is something special that God wants for your life. And God will stop at nothing until that moment happens in your life. Some of you, you came here just for a celebration, just to speculate, spectate. But God is saying, I've come here. I brought you here so you can get right with me. Can the church shout hallelujah? But lest I hold you too long, I got some good news from the Bible. Can I give you some good news? Can I give you some good news? If you want me to give you the good news, just say, go on, Pastor. Well, the Bible says that when Simeon took the baby up in his arms, he said, now, Lord, you can dismiss your servant in peace. In other words, now, I've fought a good fight. Can I get a witness in here? I've kept the faith. Can the church shout yes? I've finished my course. And now there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Can y'all help me have church now? I just need two more Baptist minutes and I'm on my way out of here. Can the church shout yes? Can the church shout yes? So today, last week, after we gave, the second Sunday after we gave, the final prayer, the final blessing, the final communion, the right hand of fellowship, I can hear Chuck saying, Father, it is finished. I've done everything I was supposed to do. Can the church out of yeah? Ooh, oh, can the church out of yeah? Yes, yes. And then a couple days later, he took his flight. And if he were to speak to us now, if I were to give Chuck the microphone, he would say to you, if anybody wants to know where I'm going, where I'm going soon. If you want to know, come on, y'all. Where I'm going, where I'm going soon. I'm going up to yonder. And be blessed. 
reason Chuck has gone on home. I'm about to close now. I see the runway. I'm fixing to land the plane. But the reason Chuck can go into the presence of the Lord because Jesus, he died. Can you get up on your feet for me and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Jesus, he died. He died. He died. He died. Come on, y'all, and say, He died. He died. He died. But early. Can you shout early? Can you shout early? Early. 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 Sunday morning. He got up. He got up. transition that all of us will make I don't care how young you are I don't care how much medicine you take I don't care how many plastic surgeries you get can I get a witness in here you can have your gym membership with the YMCA or the Philadelphia Sports Club but even healthy folk got an appointment with death. Let me get what the Bible said. Paul said, or the writer of Hebrews said, it's appointed unto man nor humanity once to die. And after the death judgment. Now, thank you to his daughter who made a very significant statement. And that is that he has preached his own eulogy because of the dash. He has lived a full and meaningful life. He made some good fried chicken. He made so many people laugh. He protected his children or his daughter. And he was a great brother uncle and friend but now today is the day somebody in this room Chuck has done what all of us are going to do but now when this moment comes in your life what will we say about you Will this be a service of celebration? Or will we have to shake our heads in confusion? But today you can leave here with the assurance that you can be with the Lord Jesus. Here it is. I got a simple plan for you. Believe you got to, first of all, acknowledge that all have sinned. Amen. From choir stand to pulpit on back to the back door up to the sound room. All of us got problems. Yes. And if you know I'm telling the truth, just say, I know that's right. Amen. Just let somebody steal your chicken. All right. All right. That's me, my brothers and my sisters. Let somebody say the wrong thing to you. And all of us got some skeletons in our closet that still got meat on the bones. But Jesus <clears throat> does not care about your skeletons. Thank you, Jesus. 
But he says, I died for you. I was buried in Joseph of Arimathea's new tomb for you. But early Sunday morning, got up with all power. And guess what? You don't have to bring any marbles. All you have to do is come to Jesus while you have time. Choir, sing that for me. Because there might be someone here and you might want to know and become a follower of Jesus. Listen, I'm not going to ask you to get up and come, but I want to pray with you. And if you're here and you are not sure where you're going to be when you leave here, lift your hands. I'll pray for you. To Jesus. Are you here? Oh, I invitation you might be saved you might know Jesus but you're not a part of a church Charles Chuck came home and for some of you God is calling you to come home so if you're here and you want to unite with this fellowship Come on, slip your hand up and we'll receive you. Come on. Oh, man. Are you here? Oh, my deacons, if you would just look out for me because I can't see. Hear me. If you want to become a part of this church, come by letter, candidate of baptism. He will take care. Take care. Come back home. She oh, uh, while you one more sing it softly again. I just got one more thing I want to say. Some say, preacher, I would come to church, but the church is full of hypocrites. But the gas station is full of hypocrites. Your job is full of hypocrites. Matter of fact, when you go on vacation or cruises, you on a cruise with thousands of hypocrites. But you don't allow the hypocrites to stop you from going about your daily life. And in like manner, don't you allow hypocrites in church to stop you from becoming a part of God's church. So as I can learn by myself, that's true. But it's nothing like being around other brothers and sisters who know Jesus. So, come on, my brother, my sister. We stand for you. Come on. Come on. Just lift your hand. Jesus. Oh, oh. One last time. Sing it for me last time. Oh, 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 you are the God. Oh, God.